we, we kind of we can we can look at all kinds of reasons why we are feeling this way why we are thinking in this way why did we have lots of thoughts and emotions why did we feel overwhelmed and it's like constant checking ourselves what is it where does it come from is it because of the moon is it because of my body is it because of my dance is it because of my service is it because of my food wow there's a, like endless and endless, endless reasons and each one can say thousand things for each thought and emotion so let's say for a moment <laughs> we take all this cause cause and effect and we let it be as it is yeah just for a short moment allowing all this cause and effect to be as it is all the stories all the descriptions everything we really believe that affect our well-being affect the way we are affect uh, our body a stressed feeling annoyed all the time feeling upset things that are coming back again and again we truly believe there is something that we need to solve and it's it's here or it's here or it's here or it's in my partner or in my family there's so many sources and we are kind of lost in uh, descriptions basically we, we don't really know so we try <laughs> we tried all of our life to fix circumstances right to fix our body to fix our mind we can't fix the moon that's a good example we let it be as it is but we tried so many things to try to change the way we feel and think and you can reflect for yourself what did you try did it work for you if it worked for you great <laughs> you know if it worked for you a little bit why to compromise for a little bit why to not feel at all times completely stable at peace relaxed open-hearted loving clear stable you know all the qualities that we really wish for <laughs> ourselves and we think they are only for special people or I wish I was born differently then maybe I would be a more stable person it's because of my mother she wasn't really um, expressing her love so that's why I'm not completely loving that's an example <coughs> It's because of my partner, that's why I feel so upset. You see, so again, feeling in ups and downs. We can take it also in a positive way. I'm so happy today, it's because of the, the moon. I think, really, because of the moon I feel happy. I'm so happy, so relaxed today. It's because I meditated one hour to this morning, that's why I'm happy. Oh, I'm so happy today. I ate really good food and I feel it's really good for my body. And, you know, I j just feel, wow, it's, that's how I should go. Oh, I feel so good because my husband told me how much he loves me. It made me feel good. So you see, we are dependent, dependent on circumstances to feel good. And if something changed in the circumstance, we feel really bad. Or we try to... <laughs> to make it feel good again I, and I tried it so many times in my life Tra changing my location changing my uh, descriptions changing my husband changing my emotions it was an extra task always something to do always something to do even if it was doing for something beneficial it was so much doing like trying to be positive so much doing <coughs> so much thinking how to change my mind into positive thinking trying to meditate empty our mind be calm feeling like I can't do it I feel bored I don't have time you know it's like I really need to concentrate but I can't and then we feel something is wrong about us you know it's like we can't really do it so something is wrong about us we never question <laughs> We never question those techniques. Does it really work for us? Does it ever, did it ever give us, provide us well-being? So we need to look at the results in our life. 
to see what really works. Like for example, you heard about the practice of short moment. Allow yourself to just drop the heavy load that you carry, just even for today. Whatever you carry with you today, drop it. You know, just drop it, just like that. Rest for a short moment. Rest openly, rest naturally, as it is. Not as it not is, as it is. <laughs> not to try to change it, manipulate it, beautify it, as it is. The moon, the body, the love, the stress, whatever it is, let it be as it is. And repeat the recognition of open intelligence. Rest body and mind completely, just as you are, just as you are. That is complete perceptual openness. It means that no matter what perception appears, we are open. You see? The, perspe the perception can be, all of my family has that, the example. And we leave it as it is. This morning, I was so stressed in the kitchen, and it really affected me. I felt so annoyed. I'm really annoyed as it is. Not in there, not out there, <laughs> not trying to take it, <laughs> not trying to embrace it, not trying to surrender to that, as it is. Rest naturally, it self releases, right? We cannot really, it's here, I'm still feeling it, it's here. Y it's here, Nick Inka? Okay, good. It's confirmation. <laughs> so in this way, you can really show to yourself that nothing really gets stuck. Even if it feels sticky, it's not really there. But you can prove to yourself. Yeah? You, again, there is a choice. You can go to the stories and believe all of the stories and try to really find justifications from everyone about that. And they say it's so true. For sure, you need to change it. Or maybe when it's full moon, just try to be somewhere else. So, you know, try to meditate. So you kind of find all of the means to confirm that for yourself, that it's true. And then what do you do? So that's a good question, right? Then what do you do? Let's say it's true. What do we do? <laughs> you see, so it's, it's a choice for each one of us. Do we want to live our lives completely in the midst of our thoughts and emotions and cause and effect? Or we want to live our life free of that, allowing everything to be as it is. Allowing everything to be as it is, it's not being in a state of allowing everything to be as it is. So it's not being in a state of unconditional love, for example, where we are like, there are no conditions, everything is loving, everything is open. Nothing is going on. Tell me something. I will not be annoyed. You know, don't tell me I love you. I know it anyway. You know, like, we, it's not like we're not contriving anything to be not loving or loving or unconditional love. It's the most natural way of being. It's exactly as we are. I'm in an intimate relationship, and I see even there how short moments of open intelligence just supported me so much in <coughs> blame the other person, trying to change him, expectations, and not feeling good enough, not feeling loving enough, you know, all of the things that I try to change about myself or about him. In the 12 empowerments, what I saw is that I can take responsibility for all these data streams, for everything I feel and think. And I can really and truly rely on open intelligence and rest deeply in my own power. So it was very powerful for me to suddenly, wow, see that I have a choice. I'm not dependent on what he feels, what he thinks, but at the same time I can truly and, and enjoy this love, you know? Like really love loving each other, being so intimate, uh, having a space for each other, rather than using one another for kind of sharing the data streams, what I feel today. And believe me, I spoke a lot with my partner about what I feel and what I think. And it was like really long conversations. And I tried to go to beautiful places to make it kind of romantic and, 
loving and I thought that's true connection <laughs> to be honest about what I feel but true honesty what I realized in the 12 empowerments is to rely on open intelligence to really let everything rest so deeply so we are clear about how to respond how to relate how to use our power, our mind, our energy, how to be together in the most simple way. You know, like sometimes you just want to be, just have fun, right? You don't want to have this every, every conversations and wow, trying to kind of, I don't know, I forgot about all the situation, I have to say, but it was so much in my mind and I struggled with that so much. For me, intimate relationship was a topic I focused all of my life almost until I did the 12 empowerments. And then things just open naturally. I would never imagine it would be like that. Like really allowing myself to be as I am. And with that, enjoying intimate relationship and enjoying all kinds of relationships. Because there is um, a stability, clarity, and responsibility to, to see what will serve best every moment. So it's really like, and the unconditional love, it comes naturally. It's like we're we are not anymore like needing anything from the other person, like we don't need anything from any circumstance or people to feel well. And this kind of stability is like, wow, there is nothing like that. We can't find it in food, we can't find it in sex, in relationship, we can enjoy all these things, but we can't find it there the true satisfaction, the true well-being, the true knowing, the true clarity. We can always find it within ourselves in open intelligence. And to have the tools of how to do it, that's what we have in the Balanced Field Training. Not to leave you like with a vague idea of find it in yourself. <laughs> it's always within you. Because these things we had like for many years, we know they're true, we all agree, but we, we want the means of how to truly get it, you know, how to truly like experience that, recognize it. And in each short moment, we tap into that and we gain confidence in that. We know that it's true. How do we know? We see the benefits of it, you see? We see the benefits in the way we speak, in the way we relate in the way we are with people, regardless of what we are thinking and feeling. So we can be totally overwhelmed and negative and stressed, but inseparable from that, we have clarity. And the recognition of open intelligence doesn't go anywhere else. So that kind of safety we have to practice and to know in ourselves that no matter what will happen in our life, we know what to do. We are not lost in descriptions, in a world of descriptions. <laughs>